can see this here. We used to have beautiful magenta roses. They were absolutely gorgeous. And here I have beautiful pink roses. And here I have a mishmash of red and pink and all colors that you can't, you wouldn't imagine. Now, first I'm checking for spiders because I'm not really in the mood to walk into a spider's room. But I am interested in finding out what's killing my flowers. Now, as you can see, there are still flower petals on here. So, again, just for the sake of making it pretty. And also aphids, which are usually what attack these flowers. In this case, that's what's attacking me now. Aphids like moisture. So again, I'm on manual focus. I'm going to go as close as I can until I see something coming in. There we go. Now, to the naked eye, this doesn't look like much other than a dead plant. Or a dying plant, I should say the camera lens in macro photography I can actually pick up the flowers the dead part of the flower the part that has the water on it which is still beautiful it's literally like shimmering in sunlight now I'm underexposed so I'm gonna bring this down a little bit I'm gonna bring it up to uh, about a 7.1 and 200th of a, uh, 250th of a second. And again, right now I'm just going for the petal. Okay. Now even things that are dead that aren't normally beautiful to the naked eye. So the camera lens, depending on the shape, it could be really something else. Now in this case, I do like to bring my f-stop as high as it will allow me. I will drop, I'm dropping right down to about 60th of a second since there's not a lot of wind up here. It's allowing me to shoot at f-18. If I needed to, I could also go in and start shooting. Now what I'm looking for is different shapes. And I might turn the camera lens just to fill those shapes in the way that I want. Okay, I'm going to put on automatic focus. Because the camera's focus is definitely better than mine at this point. Sometimes when you're shooting very, very close up, it takes a little bit of effort and time. And the reason why is because it takes time for the camera to what's called the lens to focus and to quote, catch on to the subject. If you have a very delineated subject, a lot of contrast, the camera generally knows that what you're trying to do and it will work with you. However, if you don't have um, good focus or contrast, I should say, if you don't have contrast, that's one of the, another reason to go into manual mode because you can see what you need imaged, but the camera can't. Okay, so I'm going here. And again, just because what you see is in focus does not mean it will be in focus in the final image. Generally speaking, unless you're using that depth of field preview, again, you're seeing what the camera's allowing you to see. Now here's a nice shot of, of a dying flower, sad. I'm going to add some visual interest to it. Now, I took some photos of this flower the other day, and what's very interesting, it actually looks like one of the petals is a bird's eye, and one of the dying leaves looked basically like some type of like a bear or a squirrel or something. It made for a very interesting composition. And again, you didn't really know what you were looking at, you, but you're looking at the dying rose. And I mean, now to stand corrected, actually, it was, there was a rose behind me, and now it is completely dead. Um, and that's what I was taking. So, Okay, now, now here's the thing. Now I want to find out what's killing these flowers. 
So what I'm going to do, I do see a black spot. I see several of them up here. It could just be dirt. Or it could be bugs. I'm getting as close as this camera's going to let me. Now the problem right now is not so much the camera, it's me. I am shaking a bit. Generally, this is one way to stop it. Just to plant myself up against something, no pun intended. Interesting composition we have here. leaf petals. And again, I'm looking for anything that might look like an insect. Um, ideally an aphid. A lot of times you'll find them underneath the flower on the stem. So that's what I'm shooting right now. I'm looking at the stems themselves. Okay. And I do see some spots here. So I'm going to go right in. Now if you are shooting with a low f-stop, Sometimes forgiving if you give yourself a little bit more room to shoot when you shoot a little further away. The disadvantage is that you wind up having to crop to get the image that you want, the final image. The nice advantage is, is that it allows more to come into focus. So for example, if I'm shooting something far away at a 2.8, right now I'm not, I'm shooting at an f18, but if I am shooting at something close, and see, and here's the problem, we have roses here, and I'm not really feeling like getting stuck. But I want to get underneath this flower. I want to know what's going on here. Okay, so, now the one thing that I haven't been doing is that I haven't been checking my exposure. Which is a problem because most of these photos are very dark. Some of them look like I'll be able to do something in the end, but a lot of them are useless because they're just way too dark. So I'm just going to go back and take those photos. See, and here's the sunlight again. This is, it's a good and a bad thing. It can work in your favor when it's out, but it can go away in a heartbeat. So you sort of grab it while you can. So I'm going to bring this down to an F10 shooting at uh, 125. Generally speaking, if you're shooting, if it's nice sunlight, normal day, not extra sun, not extra shade, you're shooting in light, you're at an F11 at 125. It's a good starting point for somebody who's not really sure if the camera's aperture and exposure readings are reading correctly. So again, I'm going to try to get underneath the flower. I'm shooting right at the stem, right underneath the flower. And again, now there's a bug. I have no idea what it is, but it's definitely a bug and it's moving. Okay, so I think that's it for shooting the flowers. And just as a last quick thing, I'm going to go back to where my flowers were and just do one other thing and I'll show you why. So follow me again. I didn't go underneath the trellis just in case there's a spider web there. <laughs> 